guys, welcome to the studio. This month we are going to experiment with acrylic paints. And the first project we're gonna do, we're gonna do a weaved painting, all right? So in your art box, you're gonna have lots of uh, canvases. You'll have um, some paint brushes, some cotton swabs. You'll have your artist card. You're going to have a small canvas, an eight by 10 canvas two canvas sheets of like this, two per person, and then you'll have a 9 by 12 canvas also. All right, so set the, those canvases aside today. Today we're going to use our canvas sheets. These are real nice to paint on because they're real flexible and we're going to actually cut them up. We're going to paint two canvases and of the same image and then we're going to cut them and weave them together like this painting. All right, and also you'll have a little palette and you'll have 24 tubes of paint to share. So you'll need um, a jar of water. You'll have, you'll need a ruler today, a pencil, some drawing paper, a scissors, and maybe a pen. All right, and a paper towel or something to dry your paint brushes off. So um, before we get started, let's look at our artist. Um, this month that we're talking about Jasper Johns, and there's some information here about him. And uh, this is one of his famous paintings on the front. It's larger than this. It's a little bit larger. It's a, it says numbers. And um, he, you can read on the back here, but he's still alive. Um, he's 91 years old. He was born in Augusta, Georgia on May 15th, 1930. He's known for painting, printmaking, and sculpture. Uh, the periods are abstract expressionism, neo-dada, modern art, and pop art. Um, Jasper Johns is an American painter, sculptor, and printmaker. Johns painted American flags, maps, large numbers, alphabets, and everyday objects. He focused more on the process, which he believed to be the actual art. Along with the previous generation, Johns is one of the most significant American painters of the 20th century. Jasper's career has spanned over 50 years, and to this day, his work sells for a high price tag for a living artist. Um, and then this quote is one I grabbed. It says, art is much less important than life, but to want a poor life without it. <laughs> so if you guys, as usual, if you wanna um, look him up and study some of his art pieces, he has some very interesting American art, all right? Anyway, so to do this project, we are going to make two. Like this was, I made, I decided to paint a butterfly and I painted it twice. I painted a blue one. I'm gonna take a few of these out to show you. Okay, so underneath here is a blue butterfly with an orangeish yellow background. And then I painted a purple butterfly Whoops, let's see, how does it go? A purple butterfly. I'll take a couple more out just to show you. With a red and pinkish background. Okay, so the same one, but then I cut these up in strips and then I made cuts in here and we will, I wove them together. So I'm gonna show you how I did this and then we will make one together. So if you want to do a butterfly, I made it real simple like this. I put my, I take my piece of paper and I fold it in half and then I draw just one set of wings up here and then one set down here and then I go to my, to the window and I look through it and trace it so that I get the same exact butterfly wing on both sides, okay? You don't have to do it that way, but if you want it to be symmetrical, you can. So you just take your paper, fold it in half, draw it, turn it over, go to the window, put it on the window, and you'll be able to see these wings through here, and you'll that's when you'll draw these, okay? Now, to transfer this to your canvas, there's, um, you can, if you don't have some, you might have a carbon paper, you could just copy it, or I'll show you a way to do it. 
this canvas has is like roll canvas and has little strings you might have to trim some of these so what you can do is like on the back here I would lay my pencil down go over these lines lay a little graphite down over all the lines Just take your time, whatever you decide to draw. So let's say I did that, the whole piece of paper, I would put the graphite down. And then I would take my canvas and lay it on here, line it up exactly where I want it. Make sure it's, make sure it's in the middle. And then I could take a pen and go over these lines and hopefully it'll transfer. Yeah. So they see how then it transfers by just pushing on the line. Okay. So that's one way to do anything that you ever want to draw. You want to transfer it to something. Just turn your paper over, put some graphite down, turn it over, and then it will. If you push hard on this, it'll it'll make the graphite go through. Okay. All right. So for today, I'm thinking instead of doing, um, well, first of all, if you guys want to do the butterfly, you would take this, transfer it to this piece of canvas, and then transfer it to this canvas, and then you would paint each butterfly a separate color. Like I did mine. I did mine. One was purple and one was blue okay and then different backgrounds okay and so I, um, today I'm not sure if I want to make another butterfly or maybe I was thinking I'll, I might just do something kind of graphic like maybe just some circles of paint so that in case you don't want to make a butterfly um, or you can make you could make anything as long as you make it the same thing even if I wanted to make a wave with some water and some sun. I could just paint it the same thing but twice or if I wanted to make my initial or um, a flower anything that you can think of you're just gonna paint it twice alright so um, I'm just gonna make a big circle a paint and then I'm going to do that twice so I'll show you how to do that alright I'm gonna grab some I think I'll do like cool colors and warm colors or maybe I'll just do blue purples and greens and then yellow oranges and reds maybe. that sounds nice let's see so normally I wouldn't even really use a palette because they're just kind of small but if you want to use the palette go for it if not you can just use a uh, like a ceramic paper plate or an extra piece of paper like a scrap piece of paper and just mix your stuff on there and ceramic plates are really nice because then you can just wipe it off with a paper towel and then rinse it under the water with soap and water and it's good to go okay so I think for the first for this first um, circle I'm just going to have fun mixing some different colors together. Some of you guys, we did a lot of circles last year uh, with one of our acrylic projects. And it was a lot of, uh, it was interesting to do all the mixing. I think it's just uh, fun to paint lots of, just kind of relaxing.
It just kind of makes, I'm not even cleaning my brush out. So I'm going to put some purple in here. It's real pretty. Here, huh? All right, a little darker blue. So, of course, with this kind of painting, the subject matter is endless, you know. It just depends on what you want to paint for the day. Maybe there's a something that you love to paint all the time, or draw all the time. Now you get to paint it twice with different colors. Maybe if you would do normally a blue sky, you could try a blue sky on one painting and then maybe a yellow sky on another painting. And then when you weave them together, it'll be blue and yellow. Almost done. My circle is a little off center. <laughs> right. Be careful when blending. Sometimes you get colors you're not exactly happy about, right? Purple and green make it brown. Like I'm not I'm not washing my paintbrush out, you know, but you guys can in between colors. Okay. How's that look? Just kind of blend it all together. Okay, so I'm going to let this one dry, and then I will do the orange, yellow, and reds. Let's see. Put that one down. That over there to dry. Wash my paintbrush out. All right, and then we'll do the yellows, oranges, reds. It's a couple different colors of orange. There's a deep yellow. There's a lemon yellow, brilliant red, and a crimson also. So maybe I'll see, I'll try all these, <laughs> a little bit of each. OK, 
Okay, so now I'm going to do I'm going to do the yellow, oranges, and reds. So I'm going to just try to start in the middle. All right, guys. So when you have, if you grab one of the flat brushes, you can just put it down and run it around like this. I'm just grabbing all the different oranges and yellows. You could do several of these, you know. You don't have to use the canvas paper. Like if you enjoy this project, you can use paper, just regular paper too, okay? Maybe you'd want to do one in all different shades of gray or one in all shades of like a light, the blues. You could take blue and add white to it, make some lighter blues, some tints, you could add a little black to it, make darker blues, and then cut all those up, those strips up too. You could have all kinds of stuff. You could um, make several of these, even out of paper, and laminate them, or make like a little uh, placemat. <laughs> How would that? That would be kind of fun. Okay. So, almost done with this one. We'll let them dry and then we'll cut them up. I'll show you how to do that. Oops, getting the blue in there. <laughs> Still wet over there. So let that dry and we will come back to that. a little more yellow. Sprite yellow. That's called lemon yellow. Maybe a little more lemon yellow right here. Oops, it's gonna just blend in. Let's see. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna let this one dry too and I will be back in a little bit. All right, so both of mine are dry. And now what we're going to do is we're going to put some marks on them and cut them. Okay, so I'm going to fold it in half. So I'm going to take the edges and meet them up like this. And then run my finger, and this is going to be the half mark. Okay, so that's the middle. My circle's not quite in the middle, but that's okay. I'll do this other one too just to see where it's where it's at. Actually they're both off about the same, so it should turn out just fine. 
Okay, so now we have to do some measuring. So you can keep it in half like this. All right. This one we're going to cut lines like this. Okay, but we're going to stop at the edge. So how we're going to do that is we're going to take a ruler and so, so this is folded in half and this is the edge that's open. Okay, so put your ruler down here and we're going to mark a half inch. So like between five and six, this half inch is right in the middle. So up here we're going to write mark a half inch right here. This is half inch. So measure a half inch down here and then draw a line because that's where you're going to stop cutting so the picture stays together. Okay. Then we're going to measure okay, we have to we have to measure this way. So this is nine inches. Okay? So down here, put your ruler like this. This is almost nine inches. Mark it up to nine. And you're gonna mark every inch. So here's one inch, two inches, three inches, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine is the bottom. And then come down here and do the same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, and then you're gonna match these lines up. All right, because what I mean, you'll see, you'll see what we're gonna do. We're going to cut on these lines and stop at this half inch line. It's really weird to cut up a painting. It doesn't feel, doesn't feel right. Doesn't feel normal. You'll, it's like, oh, I just made this painting. Now I'm cutting it up. But the weaved results look pretty cool. There's actually artists, if you look at uh, weaved paintings and look it up online, there are some artists that that's what they make are weave paintings. Pretty amazing. Like all of their paintings are weaved. They cut them up and weave them together. Okay, so then now we're going to cut this on this line and stop right there. Okay. And stop. I think it, uh, weavings of all kinds are pretty interesting. There's some animals in nature that do uh, different types of weaving. Some birds. There's lots of uh, fabric designers that do weaving. There's yarn designers that do a lot of weaving. It's a pretty um, amazing art form if you uh, ever get into that. Just take your time. Just remember to stop. And if you want it to be real straight, you should kind of hold the, the side like this because then it can, it won't, the cut won't go crooked, right? It doesn't have to be perfect, but. And actually some people that do the weavings, they don't make straight lines. They just make them all just, curvy lines and they make the the pieces that they weave, weave in and out they make those curvy too so it's all can be extremely abstract if you want okay so that's the bottom piece it's all cut up okay and you can trim these little pieces of the canvas. Okay, so now we're going to cut this one up to weave in, in and out of this one. So put this one aside and this one we are going to cut strips this way. Right? So this is 12 inches. So let's mark a 
Um, but we're going to have to go in a half inch on both sides. At least a half inch. Didn't we do a half inch? Yeah, we did a half inch. Okay, so we're going to lose half of our half of our um, project. So what you want to do is you're going to cut off. So we're going to do a half inch here and a half inch here. I know this. I I don't want this to seem difficult because it's not. But we're going to make this one a half inch and cut it off because see how. When we came in a half inch, we're going to lose half of the half of the painting, a half inch of the painting here and half an inch painting here. So we're going to just cut that off. Hope that makes sense. <laughs> and so make a half inch here and a half inch here. It's like using math and art together, huh? All right. So we're cut this edge off also. So in between here we have, uh, not quite, but almost 11. So I'm going to mark it, kind of put the ruler in between here. And I'm going to mark at the one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And they come down here. Let's do the same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then line these two marks up. These are the strips we're going to make. So this one we'll just cut and throw away. And then these we'll keep. So they're just one inch strips. But that is how you can measure them even. If you make marks on the top and make marks on the bottom and then connect the marks, then you'll have an even strip. You could almost lay the, the rulers thicker than it, one inch. You could almost roll, just, you know, measure the ruler each time, but I'm going to do it this way since we cut it half inch off at each side. Take some time. You can have somebody help if you need help with this part. All right, and so this part we're going to cut and throw away also. Okay, now we're going to cut this part of our painting. Pretend you're a seamstress. So that's going to be thrown away. This one's going to be thrown away. Now, what uh, you can do is you can measure, I mean, um, number them if you want. So if I wanted to, I could me uh, number these. So if I want it to go in this way, this would be one over here. So I could go like this. I could say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 11. That way when I cut these up, if I get them mixed up, um, I know where they go. Like if you're making an object, you know, you can kind of put it together like a puzzle piece. But these abstract pieces, it would be kind of nice to number them so that if they do get out of, you know, they will get out of um, order, you'll have the numbers on them. all cut up and then we'll weave them in and out. Oh, 
Okay, so now we're ready for the fun part. So now that I numbered them, it's a good thing. <laughs> One, two, three, five, four. Okay. So, depending on how you want to start, you can start over, or under, or whatever. I'm going to go over, under, over. Under, over, under, right all the way. Okay, and then I'll push it to the side there. Then the next one, I'm gonna start under, over, you know, just opposite, right? Under, over. under. All right. Let's scoot that all the way to this to the edge. All right. So I'm going to I'm going to keep doing that each strip. This one is going to be over. Over under. And I will be back with the last strip. Okay, so I'm back. So see how this strip matches up better than this one? So I'm gonna take this one out for now and put this one in there and see how that one looks. <laughs> Sometimes the measurements can be a little bit off with the paintings or maybe the paintings are a little off, they're not perfect. So if it looks better to have one in and out or then out, then just pull it out and see how that works. See how that one works better? with the design. So we have to account for this little space too that where they butt up to each other. Okay, we'll see how that works. All right, I'll be back. I have uh, the last actually two and there's really only space maybe for one more unless I make this kind of a little deeper and so I'm just gonna see which one I like how it looks better I think I'm gonna go for they both look about the same <laughs> so I'm gonna use this one so our last one we're gonna go over under tight. All right. There we go. It's all done. And you see with this one, I ended up not using two of my strips. Okay. So you can just kind of gauge what will look good. Like I could take this one out and put this one in here if I want it to. Or, and then this one's just kind of extra. But it looks, I think it looks really cool. So when you're all done like this, and um, now it's one piece, see that? It's all woven together. What you can do is if you could just leave it like this, or you could take a little uh, piece of glue and just put a little dot of glue under these loose pieces, and then your painting will stay completely together all the time. All right, you just kind of move them around, see how you like it. I think it looks really pretty. I like the col different colors together. 
Um, and like I said, I could replace this one too if I wanted to. All right, so if you ended, ended up doing a design, the same thing is done. Like with this butterfly, same, same kind of thing. The, the bottom one, I mean, cuts this way, and then the top purple butterfly I cut strips this way, and then wove it together, okay? All right, um, hope you guys have fun doing this project, and um, be creative with your colors, and just enjoy it, all right? So have a good week, and thanks a lot, and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.